Welcome to another video in the series, The Map to Adobe Lightroom Classic, the Michael Approved Process. Uh, we're continuing in our series of uh, videos discussing uh, and showing you how to use the various um, local adjustment tools so we can make adjustments to specific areas of the photo. The previous video was uh, the uh, spot removal tool uh, to get rid of uh, things that are distractions or, or make changes and move stuff or hide things. Uh, the next tool is called the adjustment brush. So the adjustment brush is in your toolbar in Adobe Lightroom Classic. On the right hand side in the develop module, it's on the far right in the toolbar. Uh, kind of looks like a makeup brush. So when you click that to turn it on, you will see a lot of controls. In fact, it kind of looks like the basic panel. It has many of the same elements as the basic panel. We've got white balance controls here at the top. We've got tone controls here in the middle. Uh, the presence section here is pretty much duplicated. Uh, we've got sharpness and noise, diffringe and moiré. I, I hardly ever use most of these down here. And then at the bottom we have the parameters of the brush itself. Before I begin discussing the brush parameters, I want to talk a little bit about how I'm going to use the adjustment brush in this image. Uh, this photo of Stephen, Nicole, Stephen and Nicole at their wedding uh, in this, this lovely garden, but uh, there's a couple of things that are bothering me, like this little patch, I don't know why my eye goes here, partially because he's looking down, so that brings your eye in this direction. So this little patch of brown. Um, I also don't like how quite... I don't really like how bright this grass is, how or yellow green it is. So I want to change that. I want to change this whole area plus that, this little patch over here. I want to make it a little bit different color green, mute it a little bit, plus uh, cover that up as well. So the adjustment brush is a perfect candidate for that. It's basically a paint brush, and then we can use any of these controls, colors, uh, brightnesses, exposure, uh, and as well as then uh, the clarity, dehaze, texture, and saturation. So brush parameters. Uh, a lot like the um, spot removal brush, this brush has a size as first parameter. So again, just like the spot removal brush, uh, the size is controlled by the slider there as well as uh, the wheel on your mouse if your mouse has a scroll wheel. Uh, the inner circle here is the size of the brush, and again, just like the uh, spot removal brush, the outer circle is a soft feathered edge. Um, again, just like the spot removal brush, I leave my feather in the neighborhood of about 50. Uh, I found it works really, really well. Uh, the flow is the next control down. Um, again, feather is the softness of the edge of the brush. The flow with the adjustment brush is... Uh, the how quickly, if you will, think of a can of spray paint. If you hold the butt the spray down for just a second, psh, you get a little, just a little pop of the of the spray paint. If you hold it down longer, you get more. So that's what the flow is like. In density here is like opacity. Um, that's how much of what you're originally painting over uh, shows through what you, the brush you're painting. Uh, for most cases, I leave flow and density at 100. Again, sometimes on portrait retouching, I might turn these down a little bit. That leaves a little more of the original behind. Um, also, it, it, it makes the effect a little more uh, potentially natural. So let's scroll back up to the top for a minute. And uh, you can see I've got some... Uh, when you come into the, the adjustment brush, uh, what, wherever you left it last, all those settings are still there. And there, none of those are what I want. Uh, so rather than moving, let's see, there's probably about five or six sliders. Uh, I can reset this all at once by double clicking on the word effect. And that's something I recommend and I try and remember to do. Every time I come into the, the adjustment brush, automatically just click on the word effect twice. So what I want to do is I want to change the color of this grass to a less yellow green. Plus, I also want to make this uh, area right here green. So here's how I'm going to do that with this adjustment brush. Uh, I'm only really going to do two things to make this happen. I'm going to select a color, and you, this is how you change color. It's down at the bottom of the adjustment brush uh, panel. There's color and then a little... Uh, white rectangle with an X through it. If you click on that white rectangle, it allows you to pick a color. 
So the color I'm going to pick, so if you, cl if you click in this eyedropper tool, it's selecting a color, and you can see it's a, it's a very bright um, yellow-green. But if I want it to, if I click and keep holding on that, uh, I can select a color from the photo. So I'm going to pick some of these, try and find a darker green. It doesn't look like it's really selecting one. So I'm just going to come back over here and pick a pretty dark green, uh, saturated green up here. Before I begin painting, now I, I'll actually I'll paint here. You can see when I do that, that's even worse. It's terrible. Uh, this color is an overlay. So adjustment brush, when you paint, even though I have my flow and opacity uh, density at 100, it's still overlaying the underlying color beneath. So that's why you kind of get this doubling up effect. So if I want to change the color, especially if I want to change it to something different, the best way to do that is to add saturation of minus 100 to the mix. So it's taking out all the color below where I'm painting and replacing with this new color. So um, I'm kind of sampling, trying to find a little bit different color that's not, there we go, that's better. That's better. So I'm just gonna keep painting, 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 it's a little rich over there. I can, as you'll see, I'm gonna change my mind. I, I did uh, get a little bit onto her skin, I'll fix that in a moment. Uh, it's still a little not quite the right color. I'm just going to quickly brush in here. Um, so I need to erase. So I'm going to zoom in to see where I need to erase, where I goofed. So I'm going to do Command on a Mac and then the plus. I'll go one more time, Command plus. And, and then to, now I, ha I have the tool active. So my cursor, if I click, is going to paint again. So I want to hold down the space bar and then I'll turn the cursor into the grabber hands so I can re... I can move this back around. So I need to fix this right here on her skin and, and over here on her arm. So one of the two, uh, painting with a mouse is hard. Uh, I'm not real good at it. I've gotten better over the years, but it's, it's kind of hard. So what, uh, what I do, there's a tool inside of Lightroom to help you paint uh, more accurately with a mouse. And I'm going to use it on the erase tool. It's called Auto Mask. And when auto mask, it's selected here when I clicked on the erase tool in the uh, brush parameters section at the bottom of the tool. Uh, when auto mask is on, basically what happens is as long as I keep the middle of the brush on her, even though I've got part of the brush outside, it'll, it'll mask to that, it'll keep it limited to just working inside, it, it, it detects this contrast edge. So it's a wonderful little way, uh, and I mostly use it anymore on the erase tool. I paint without it and then come back in and fix, uh, because if you leave auto mask on when you're doing the main painting, it really slows it down. It's very, very computer intensive. There's a lot of math going on. So uh, I'm gonna keep erasing a little bit over here. I got a little too much into this flower as well, this part of the plant. So uh, again, you can tell it's slow. It's a little slower. It's laggy following. Um, but there we go. So that's the erase mode auto mask on. You can paint with auto mask. Uh, sometimes I do if I'm trying to be really careful around an edge. Uh, but often I'll just paint without it and then know I need to come and erase a little bit to fix later on. So I'm going to switch back to my A brush, which has the... Um, uh, is the regular brush painting mode and I'm gonna zoom back out and this color isn't quite right yet so colors not quite right so I'm gonna click on the color box again and just move this around until it feels like a uh, a green that better matches with everything else in the scene uh, it's again doing quite a bit of math so that kind of muted green I, that's okay I can live with that it's in the right tonal range here, and uh, you know I'm just again watching by eyeball here. I'm not looking at the numbers. The hue is the color, the saturation is the richness, but it gets me in the ballpark. And here's what happens now that I've done this. So I don't have this yellow patch here. So these these folks here now are more prominent in the photo uh, because the rest of the background is kind of monochrome. It's one kind of uniform color of, of green and a, a little bit of yellow. So that's how I used adjustment brush here. 
the active brush is indicated by this this pin with a dark black circle in the middle of it. Um, and if I click done, um, that circle goes away. So that's an interface element to tell you, yes, you have a brush and that's where it starts. So if I want to make a change, let's say I want to change the color or a treatment or an effect, uh, I can do that by, uh, now I've turned the brush back on. Uh, I can see my pin. You'll have a pin for each brush. So if you want to see, okay, which, where does this doing, where is this active? If I put my mouse over the pin, it'll show you a red overlay, which shows you where the areas that brush is affecting. If I click on it, now that brush is active. And if I make a change, let's say I want to make the grass there that I painted on just a little darker in addition to the color. Uh, so I'm going darker, darker uh, on the brush. So minus 0.51 is where I went. Uh, it made this just a little darker. Um, there's a lot of blue in this, so maybe I go in the temperature slider just a little towards yellow uh, to make it a little less blue. Um, I already got the saturation of minus 100. Uh, so there we go. Uh, we can edit the brush after we've applied it. What you're what the brush is doing is the area that you see here with the red is called a mask. So it's saying in this area, apply the changes that you would like to have happen. Uh, again, you know, you've got all these controls here. Depending on what you're doing, you will use different ones of them. Sometimes you might just use one as I'm doing here or two or three. Sometimes you may use six or seven or eight of the controls depending on what you're doing. So that's uh, this photo with adjustment brush. Um, we'll go ahead and do an, another photo. Uh, this one, uh, another wedding photo. Uh, it seems quite common in summer weddings around here in, in, in Washington to have uh, grass that is not as green as you would like. So adjustment brush will come to the rescue here. So uh, in this photo, uh, I want to make the grass not, so, I want to make it uniformly green. Uh, also, I want to kind of address this this stick poking up back here and a little bit of the beauty bark showing through. Um, any color that's different is going to draw your attention for a moment. So again, what I'm trying to do in the changes that I'm making with the adjustment brush is keep your attention on Natalie here. Um, so we're going to use the adjustment brush. We're going to paint with a color uh, that's going to that's going to work well on uh, this grass. So just like we did in the last photo with the, the grass painting, uh, I'm basically going to paint on all the grass and this little bit and with the adjustment brush. So the adjustment brush is active. I'm going to double click effect to reset it. Uh, because I'm painting and I want to replace a color, I'm going to take my saturation to minus 100 and then come down to the color box, pick a color, um, and uh, we'll get started painting. Um, yeah, so something like that, I can always change my mind. So uh, this one's gonna take a little while, so uh, I'll speed up the process here in the video, but you will get to see it happen. Here we go. So I needed to reference my original photo to see what the uh, uh, the values I had here because I wasn't quite liking what I was doing. Uh, sometimes it happens, um, and it's hard to hit these numbers exactly. So I just highlighted it, and then I just am I'm typing them in. Um, so there we go. Um, so it's a it's a relatively muted uh, green. Oops, that's not the right number. Sorry. It was sixty. 60, better, better. So we're in the right ballpark. Um, I've done a relatively quick job. I probably should zoom in and just double check around the dress, but this will get you pretty close and give you the idea of what we're doing. Uh, again, we've muted the color, uh, uh, desaturated the area underneath the brush so that the under uh, it's overlaying uh, kind of a neutral color so we get more of the color we want rather than uh, a weird color change. Let me show you what that looks like. If I turn saturation back to zero underneath the brush, uh, you get this, which is not better. So we'll go back to zero on saturation. 
again, the reason that happens is because this is overlaying the existing uh, information underneath the brush. So saturation to zero sets basically what's underneath would be black and white. So um, adjustment brush to the rescue on some uh, yellow grass, drawing your attention away from from Natalie and her smile on her on her wedding day. Um, so yeah, adjustment brush. It's it's kind of awesome. Uh, very very powerful way to to uh, in this case fix a color in a photo. I've got one more photo from uh, this wedding I want to do, and we're gonna uh, do some exposure changes on that one. I often uh, refer to Lightroom as the as the two minute editor uh, because you know on most photos I can do the edits I want in, in just a couple minutes. Um, using adjustment brushes does does add to that. Um, it takes a little more time, uh, but it's still uh, if you especially if you don't know Photoshop, um, it's great to keep everything all in one program here. Keep it nice and simple. It's uh, the adjustment brush gives you a lot of power to make changes. Uh, to make your photos stronger um, by removing distractions, changing colors as needed, highlighting or uh, brightening certain parts, darkening others, uh, again, for the, for the sake of the photo, not just for a special effect. So on this photo, uh, still from Natalie's wedding, this silhouette, um, what I want to do here is I, I really like the, the silhouette. You got just a little bit of hint of light on her. Uh, but there's there's lots of distractions. We've got the window that's behind her and the, and the gauzy curtain is um, not quite bright enough to go to pure white. So I'm going to brighten that up. In, in the process, I'm also going to get rid of these a couple of these little bits of hair uh, as well. I'll cover those up. So uh, let's get started with that and the adjustment brush. So uh, the adjust adjustment brush is active. I'm going to double click effect so it resets from what I was doing, which was coloring. I'm not coloring this time. I'm changing exposure. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my exposure uh, pretty much all the way up to, to four here. Uh, is that enough? Yeah, probably. Let's see what happens. So I'm just going to start painting. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just making it like she's taking a picture on a white background here. Um, so I'm just brushing and um, away we go. So here we go. It's pretty simple. I do want to be a little careful as I get close to her outline. I don't want to hit her. Um, I'll make my brush a little smaller, change size as you get to areas that need a little more detail and finesse. Uh, come over here to this side, get this little hair out of the way, uh, around her chin and her neck. Uh, this little bit here. I kind of like how there's a natural fade down here at the bottom. Uh, come back in here, just clean up these little stray neck hairs just a little bit. Brush along there, along the, the bit of the, the turn of the hair. So pretty quickly, boom. Uh, just adjustment brush, painting with really bright, maximum brightness uh, to make this whole background go, go to pure white. So it's just a silhouette. So again, we've kind of got uh, Photoshop here inside of Lightroom. Uh, we can do this kind of thing uh, probably as quickly or maybe not in, in Photoshop. Uh, it does. It is a little more complicated in there. You've got to do layers. and um, But here we are in one program uh, doing all this amazing stuff uh, just into certain parts of the photos using uh, adjustment brush. So uh, there's lots of ways you can use adjustment brush. I've shown you just a couple. Hopefully uh, it's enough of an introduction to get you started. Um, the best way to use any of these tools in Lightroom, especially the more complicated ones, and, and adjustment brush is probably the most complicated, is to um, is just to use them, practice, try and best understand how they, they work. And if you have a question, uh, leave it below in the comments on this video or, or send me an email through my website. I look forward to hearing from you. I hope this uh, video series on adjustment brush has been helpful um, and uh, that you're excited to see how you can use it to make your photos uh, more interesting and stronger. So uh, until we meet again here in the, the map to Lightroom, uh, go take some pictures and uh, see how you can uh, edit them in Lightroom. That's not good. So uh, until we meet again uh, in the map to Lightroom, I hope you have a great time taking photos.